So there was a recent debate that took place. Um, Dave Smith, Jank Uger. It was hosted uh, by Zero uh, Hedge. And surprisingly, Dave Smith and Jank are actually on the same team. They're working together. And it has to deal with the horrific conflict that's happening uh, in Gaza. And most recently, we are well aware of the fact that Iran launched uh, a couple of dozens, hundreds of drones and missiles at Iran in response for Israel uh, blowing up its consulate in Damascus. And because of this, we are still sitting at tables discussing uh, this horrific genocide that's taking place in Gaza. All the while, nothing will be done. And the quote Bassem Youssef, Israel's going to get away with it. I know. I wish that wasn't the case. But let's go ahead and pull up this video here for us all to see. It's only about nine minutes, about 10 minutes. There's so much more to the interview and the debate that took place. Let's play this video for all of us to see and hear. If Israel announced we are disarming and we will fight no longer, what would happen if the Palestinians said we are disarming and we will fight no longer? What would happen? If you are intellectually honest, you know the answer to the question. The day after Israel announced it disarmed, you would have an October 7th of the entire population of Israel. There would be finally an actual genocide, not the false accusation of Israeli genocide in Gaza. If the Palestinians announced that the next day or perhaps the next week, there would be peace. This is the only time as the little excerpt I saw when I spoke at Oxford and debated this issue. This is the only case in modern history where people believe the democracy, the free state, the state with an opposition press, an opposition party, civil rights for all its citizens, including its two million Arab citizens, the, the peace-loving state, the democracy is the aggressor, and the police state that tortures its opponents, they're the good guys. That is how inverted it is. I have a theory as to why everything is inverted, and I believe it is because it is the one Jewish state in the world. There are 22 Arab states. There are 52 Muslim states. There are 200 states around about that number all over the world. Only one, only one is targeted for extinction. There is no other state targeted for extinction. Only the one Jewish state the size of New Jersey. And so that is the issue. One side wants the other side dead. And it has been true since 1948. You know, when Mr. Prager... So that was fascinating from that gentleman right there. He's talking about this vic victim mentality. However, let's look at who has the most advanced military in the Middle East. It is the aircraft carrier called Israel. To quote Joe Biden, it is our aircraft carrier in the Middle East. They have the tanks, the planes, the technology, the armaments, the surveillance equipment, and so much more. And what's happening in Gaza is the world's most one-sided fistfight. It is absolute destruction, mayhem, and insanity. All the while, the people of Rafa are at risk of being destroyed. It's home to between 1.3 to 1.5 million refugees. It is what remains of Gaza's cities. Everywhere else on the Gaza Strip has been turned into a moonscape. But is it that hard to actually really dream of a peace? Apparently, for the apartheid government, it is. Now, there are no angels in this fight except for the people, the men, women, and children who are civilians being destroyed, starving to death. But this apartheid government that we are seeing in Israel, that we're seeing implement these horrific war crimes, they have access to the media and they have their sycophants to go on air, on the internet, on television, on radio, in the newspapers, to say, oh, if they called for peace, they would be destroyed. Let's hear what Dave Smith says. Says one side wants peace and the other side wants to kill all of these people. It's a very convenient collectivist way to look at things. But the reality, the objective reality of the situation here is that there have been atrocities on both sides committed against the other side. This is true throughout the history of the existence of Israel. This is true before the existence of the state of Israel when, with the Zionist settlers, the British, the Arabs. There were atrocities committed on all sides. And th to say that everybody, as if, or, or to imply that everybody on the Israeli side just wants peace and everybody on the Palestinian side just wants, that is just not true. 
There are lots of Palestinians who just want peace, and there are lots of Israelis who want their land and are quite willing and will openly, explicitly say they're willing to do whatever it takes to take their land. It, 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 it's, I feel that... It... Oh, don't you like how you're going to witness Prager right now? And I don't want to interrupt Dave Smith, but Prager, you're going to witness him do some mental gymnastics. If, if you thought Simone Sanders in 2020 was a gymnastic expert in regards to defending all of Biden's gaffes and slip-ups and failures, sit back, relax. Prager is an all-star performer. Simone Sanders, did you take notes from him? On this entire issue, I, I'm, I'm living uh, in a make-believe world. The Every analogy could have been applied to Nazi Germany. There were innocent Germans who were killed by the Allies in the bombing and in invasions and so on. The, no one denies that. He brings up the German Third Reich. <laughs> they never catch a break, do they? But to point out that there were innocent Germans while the Nazis were in charge is a morally idiotic point. It means nothing. It only means that every innocent German's life that was taken is the responsibility of the Nazis. Every innocent Palestinian life that has been taken is the responsibility of Hamas or Hezbollah. That's it. The, the analogy is perfect. There is one difference between Hamas and the Nazis. And I never called any group in my 40 years of radio Nazi. I never called an individual that other than the Nazis of, of the 1940s. But there is only one difference between Hamas and the, and the real Nazis of Germany. The Germans hid their atrocities. Hamas boasts and videos them. Just like the IDF. I, 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 well, wait, wait, Kit, what are you talking about? Well, I can't play some of those videos because YouTube's guidelines will strike us down. But uh, look, whether you're libertarian or green, socialist or communist, Democrat or Republican, boomer, Xer, millennial, Gen Z, if you go on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and maybe on Facebook, but we also seen some posts on YouTube as well, the IDF, well, they've been blowing up men, women, and children, schools, places of worship, refugee centers, community centers, all of that, the whole shebang. And then, of course, torturing and mocking prisoners, shooting at refugees as they're trying to get food. You know, never forget the flower massacre. Hell, even targeting the world's central kitchen. And by the way, just a quick reminder, so all of you don't forget, but the WCK, well, they got on their phones, talked to the IDF, and said, hey, we're taking this route. Three vehicles going from point A to point B and from point B right back to point A. All three vehicles were hit. Bang, bang, bang. Not an accident, but on purpose. I mean, how else would you describe what happened? Just don't say it's miscommunication, especially when all three vehicles have the WCK logo on its doors, on its roof, in open communication. I mean, you got to ask yourselves, how, how how did the IDF F that up? But Prager, dude, I know I know you, you have at least somebody who's internet literate around you, you clown, you jackass. You're telling me that you ain't paying attention to what the IDF is posting on its social medias? People dancing as as they launch artillery into civilian centers or at hospitals. Ha. Huh. Okay. Okay. But look, look, man, if you're going to be throwing that knife, hey, I'm going to catch it right back and huck it right back at you. Ask how, ask Lil Pan how that turned out for him. Yeah, Can I just, I, I'm, yeah. so, I'm just kind of uh, I'm blown away by the statement that Mr. Prager just made that the only difference he can see between the Nazis and Hamas is that the Nazis hid their atrocities. So if that's the only difference you can see, I just I have a few others uh, that pop to mind. Um, the Nazis were a government. The Nazis had an army. The Nazis had an air force. The Nazis had submarines. The Nazis controlled from France to Poland in all of Europe, whereas Hamas can't even control Gaza effectively. I mean, I just I, I find the statement that you can't see any differences between the Nazis killed Do you see a over. Difference? Well, okay, but hold on. But you said that wasn't what you said. What you said is that you can't see a difference. What, the every, Nazis. Okay, okay, but the not. Yes, I see a, a moral difference. The Nazis killed over 10 million people out side of the war conflict, just in terms of people that they killed, let alone the tens of millions of people who you might hold them responsible for. So yes, I do see a moral difference between the two. I'm not saying October 7th was... 
I just wish somebody would bring up. Hold on. What you should have shot with first is, hey, what about the IDF posting all those horrific war crimes and abuse? You know, that seems like, hey, if you, if you look back on the Wayback Machine and look at uh, photos from World War II, he, there were a lot of pictures of the German soldiers doing that to civilians, men, women, and children, and captured soldiers. You know, similar to what the IDF is doing. It's almost like, gee, wh where did the IDF learn such horrific tactics from? And I learned it from you, Dad. Horrifically immoral. But if you're going to say, do you see a moral difference? That would be like if somebody had murdered two people and you went, I see no difference between that and the Nazis. Uh, okay, yes, there's, they're both immoral, but there's enormous differences between the two. Now, to the, to the other point of the idea of can Israel eliminate Hamas, even if they were, which I don't think is feasibly possible that they eliminated everybody who is a member of Hamas. I mean, in order to do this, you would have to look at, you know, if, if the images of Gaza City aren't enough, you would have to look at images five times over of that. And this is going to result in just slaughtering innocent people, not to mention the excess mortality where hundreds of thousands of people are going to die as a result of this in the future. But even then, you would just be dealing with another Hamas-like group. Because if you don't understand what creates this problem to begin with, look, this is the problem. This happens all throughout history, all throughout the world. If you want, there's a reason why the Nazis only rose. First, it was after we imposed Versailles. But then, as you know, it was after the Great Depression, when there was hyperinflation, when things go terrible, that's when the worst, most violent extremist groups rise. Dennis, and that's what yeah. the future is going to be, unfortunately. Yeah, I hate yeah. to um, put it this way, so but I, I mean it sincerely, so I will. You are on record now because the Internet has a permanent memory. I'm oh, yes, it does. How could we ever forget what the IDF soldiers are doing? I mean, it's easy to point the finger at Hamas and look what they've done. OK, all right. But but who controls what gets in and out of Gaza? Who controls the water, the gas, the food, the medicine? Who's shooting at starving and desperate men, women, and children? The internet remembers. By the way, you know, how can we forget that our oh-so-fantastic Congress, including people like Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Row Khanna, the guy who likes to do insider trading too, please check out Unusual Whales, how they voted. 377 House representatives against 43 Democrats and one Republican saying that from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is now deemed anti-Semitic. We had Congress police our speech. Now, somehow that is anti-Semitic, right? Now, that doesn't sound like that much to me. That's just a slogan. I would also go on to say, how can we forget that there's the influence of APAC over our politicians and other pro-Israeli lobby groups and the fact that there are many groups pro-Israeli that are calling for the censorship of stuff, posts and videos on TikTok or Twitter or Instagram and Facebook. So the Internet will remember. Thank you, Prager, for saying that. Yes, yes, the Internet does have a long memory. I'm aware of saying that there's no comparison morally between Hamas and the Nazis. No, no, no you changed it. Change. Well, no, yes, record. he's on the well, record. Well, for the record, you, you, changed, well, well, you changed what I said a little bit. Yeah. But no, sure. no, 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 yeah. wait. So no, you, I didn't say that. You, you, wait, all right, you don't. So you think morally they are similar, yes or no? I, I, you said I can't see anything different about them yes, except that the Nazis. Yes, and I was talking, everyone knows no, listen, I was talking morally. Of course, what, Hamas does not what's control the Mr. same. Beware of people who act moral, all right? I just can't help but think of that. Uh, I don't know if you all remember that show, Moral Oral. Great claymation show on Adult Swim. There was this one character in particular who was one of these holier-than-thou people. And uh, she was on the phone with her mother, right? You didn't hear her mother, but the character said, I never said I was holier-than-thou, mother, but I am holier-than-you. Beware of those people who act all high and mighty, who think they have righteousness and God on their side. Those who act so morally righteous or think that they know how others should live and speak. And yes, these are one of these SJWs on the right, right? You have SJWs on the left, you have SJWs on the right. These uh, people who act all moral are usually the biggest freaking hypocrites, and I've seen them. They come in all shapes and sizes, shades of color. 
hypocrites through and through. They don't even believe a fraction of what they say. Mr. Prager, countries. Mr. Prager, what's beautiful about the internet is what you just said. It is on record, so people can see what that's I correct. said, and then they it can see right. what you that's said. Demagogy. That's right. Go ahead, there is no moral difference between the Nazis and Hamas. Both want to exterminate Jews. That is what we're talking about. Not whether or not the Hamas has taken over Czechoslovakia. That's an in irrelevant point to what I made. There is no moral distinction. Hamas would like to butcher every Jew in Israel, maybe in the world, I don't know, but certainly in Israel. It's in their charter, and that's what they announced. They're proud of October 7th. They are proud of rape. They are proud of burning Jewish families. So that story right now is being debunked. Can't hold on to that propaganda forever. Now, what happened on October 7th is horrific. But just remember, just remember, right? I know I got my difference of opinions, but, you know, with this person, but I'm going to quote Charlie Kirk here for this, you know, was a stand down order. Because originally in October, when this was happening, when this whole thing was happening, this whole shebang, Charlie Kirk brought up the fact like, look, I've been to Gaza. I've, I've been to Israel. I've seen this all these large walls and watchtowers and barbed wire fences and all of that. How the hell does it happen? Was well, a stand down order given. And never forget that the New York Times posted an article saying that the Israeli intelligence services gave a heads up or the, it, they were given a heads up to their superiors. Like, Hey, there might be an attack happening to which they did nothing. It's almost like there was a wag the dog kind of moment that was orchestrated families and the nazis were proud but the nazis hit it and hamas boasts about it that's the one difference Jake, go ahead. <laughs> again that's the yeah. one difference see yes. you make the point again that's not the one difference there's other differences also go ahead go ahead this is alice yeah. in wonderland it's if anybody watched this debate and they didn't know what was happening in the world they would think oh my god i guess hamas is this giant power and it's been abusing israel this entire time poor little tiny israel and hamas is this gigantic power crushing israel what are you guys talking about? Hamas has got pea shooters. They did terrible damage on October 7th. Now Israel's done 30 times worse to the civilians. They've massacred civilians after civilians after civilians. Israel is the is Goliath. It is not David. It is the Germans in terms of military power. It is not the Jews. The Palestinians are the equivalent of the Jews during the Holocaust. They have been put into ghettos. Then they have said, you have no freedom. You will serve us and serve us only. And right now they're saying we're going to have permanent occupation. And are wait, so were the Jews not supposed to fight back against the Germans? Do the Palestinians, right. hold on, hold on. Do the Palestinians not have a right to defend themselves? Does it only go one way where Israel can crush, crush, crush? And how dare you lowly Palestinians fight back? How dare you? Now we'll kill. Now I know Dave is laughing, okay? Thank you. You're being a little bit over the top. Next time, bring in Jimmy Dore. <laughs> Shout out to Jimmy Dore. Keep on doing the great work. Or is it that? You know what? Who else will we bring on here? Yeah, you know, bring, bring, in, bring in the crew from Do Dissidents or RBN. Make, make that happen, okay? Make that happen. Make that happen. Jank, you're, 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 you're at an 11. I need you to bring it down to an 8. 30 times more of you and will occupy you forever and ever and ever. And we're supposed to accept that? Are you guys nuts? They're never going to accept it. Never, ever. Batya, I love you. But you're, if you think that the Palestinians are now more anti-Hamas and more pro-Israel, you have lost your mind. They despise Israel. And they will fight. And hold on. This is the most important point. They are going to fight Israel forever, not because they hate the Jews. Oh, my God, they're Nazis. Oh, for no reason at all. They were just walking by, and all these Jews came by, and they hate them. No, they took their land, and they still have it. They have them under their thumb. They can cut off the water, the power, the food, and they have, and they're starving them to death. And you think that, what, they just coincidentally hate the Jews, and that's their driving ideology? No, they're fighting you because you're occupying them. This is the most obvious thing in the world. It is. Truly it is. Now, there's a lot more to it. The debate does go on for another, well, shockingly, two hours and ten minutes. So it's that was just one of the highlights. But it's important to remember that the Internet does have a long memory. The Internet will remember. And it's important for us to look back, especially what ha was happening before October 7th. Case in point, Netanyahu's government was a struggling. It was in turmoil. 
due to the fact that many Israelis were not popular with Netanyahu's policies. And what is Netanyahu going to do? Well, you're going to want to distract any kind of uh, criticism towards your government, and you need something big. You need something gigantic, something so huge that people won't pay any attention to just how much of a failure you are. And that is, hey, war. War is a good distraction. Remember that New York Times article I referenced? That article gave a heads up that there was an attack happening. Perhaps it was pushed along. Perhaps it was just suggested that would never happen. All I know is a warning was given. And how is it with all these concrete walls, these barbed wire fences, surveillance cameras, intel service, watchtowers, drones, tanks, security forces, you didn't see this shite, fi shite fist haymaker coming your way. It's almost as if it was allowed to happen and no one would question it. And what's happening now in Gaza? The full destruction of the Palestinian people. Israel is not going to give up that land. Recently, Netanyahu made a comment of talking about reconstruction. What kind of reconstruction are we talking about? What kind of reconstruction would he be planning for? Well, folks, a lot could be said about this. A lot could be taken away. But there's now a five billion, a whopping five, not not one, not two, not three, not four, but $5 billion to construct or help rebuild a Gaza. So let's go ahead and play this video and check it out. Because if you're not sick to your stomach, you soon will be. I am going to בקרוב אני גם משוחח עם מנהיגים נוספים. אני מודה לידידינו על תמיכתם בהגנת ישראל, ואני אומר את זה גם תמיכה במילים וגם תמיכה במעשים. יש להם גם כל מיני הצעות ועצות, אני מעריך את זה, אבל אני רוצה להבהיר שאת ההחלטות שלנו אנחנו נקבל בעצמנו. ומדינת ישראל תעשה כל מה שצריך כדי להגן על עצמה. הממשלה תאשר היום את תוכנית תקומה לשיקום יישובי עוטף עזה. אנחנו נשקיע סכום של גדול מאוד, של 19 מיליארד שקלים, כדי להזניק את יישובי עוטף עזה לדורות. אנחנו נשקיע בדיור, בתשתיות, בחינוך, בתעסוקה, ברפואה ועוד. מחבלי החמאס ביקשו לעקור אותנו, אנחנו נעקור אותם ונעמיק שורש. נבנה את ארץ ישראל, נשמור על המדינה שלנו. תודה רבה לכם. Say it with me, folks. What could possibly go wrong? So yes, Mr. Prager, the internet does have a long memory. The people will not forget when early on our politicians dismissed everything that was happening there, at the early stages of the war. And never forget that the Washington Post did an article quite recently, it was a few weeks ago, on how the Biden-Harris administration knew, they knew in October of 2023 that the IDF was targeting civilian infrastructure. Never forget that this administration, as well as all of our fantastic members in the United States Senate and House, are owned by APAC and other pro-Israeli lobby groups. Never forget that our media is doing everything it can to dismiss the war crimes that's happening there. Yes, the media is covering it, but they were trying to do all what they could from their old playbook to try and dismiss just how crazy and out of pocket the IDF has been uh, conducting its operations to the people don't forget that the new york times is telling its reporters its journalists hey yeah you shouldn't add in the word palestine or genocide or all that other kind of stuff these are certain words that you want to avoid are you not sick to your stomach are you not enraged so at least shout out to uh dave smith and jank uger you know, I might have my disagreements with them on a few policies here and there. But when it comes down to this genocide in Gaza, everyone needs to speak out because it's going to be too late. And at this point in time, knowing how corrupt and inept and impotent our politicians are, knowing that money controls the system, knowing that money controls the thoughts and minds of our quote unquote lawmakers that care about this republic, they're not going to do anything. They're not going to cut aid to Israel. They're not going to cut any military spending. They're going to let it go on.